Okay, I'm ready. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to day three of Empower 2014. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Linda Dean. I'm the education program strategist at Laserfish. Well, it is my great pleasure to introduce our uh, presenter, Adam Galvin Jr., uh, who is going to present on the topic of going paperless enterprise-wide with Laserfish. You may all know that Adam is the first recipient of the Tom Wayman Leadership Award this year. And so great accomplishment. Uh, congratulations. So Adam demonstrated uh, extraordinary leadership when implementing um, more than 200 electronic forms and workflows uh, over 18 departments and more than 20 campuses. Uh, really moving the district uh, from paper-laden to completely paperless. Extraordinary. And uh, so how did you do it? <laughs> I, I, so that's, that's why I asked Adam to come here and share with all of us his insights on you know, how he accomplished all these uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, achievements today. So please join me in welcoming Adam. Good morning. And thank you for coming. Uh, before I get started, just want to make sure how many education uh, people do we have? In okay, cool. So you guys will understand some of the issues that we kind of went through, and you might have the same thing in trying to implement it. And we'll discuss that and what we did and how we got around that. Um, first, let's talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be about, about us, Edgewood ISD, uh, how we use Laserfish and Edgewood, uh, also the ministry uh, support and uh, you know, how we handled everything through Laserfish. We'll also talk about how it started with Paperless, how before we went with Laserfish, there was also other things that we started changing, and we'll discuss that. Um, we'll talk about accounts payable. They were the ones that we started doing workflows and getting everything paperless. And from there, we'll move into forms, in which we started using HR, risk, payroll, uh, athletics, and then we'll open up some questions and answers, and then at the end, we'll show you a little bonus, kind of what we're doing with Laserfish and, and using it a different way. Um, <clears throat> let's get started. So about Edgewood, we got 20 campuses, as she's mentioned before, uh, two high schools, three middle schools, 10 elementary, three Head Start, a f alternative, and a fine arts. Uh, we got about 12,000 students, and we got 1,800 employees. Um, I'm not sure if they had got the wrong number, but we have about 33 departments. So. Every department, you know, it's a lot different, and so, you know, as, as everybody has forms in a, a different department, so as you can imagine how many forms that are out there. Uh, Leisure Fish Chavante is what we use right now. We're uh, looking at upgrading to Rio. We have 180 full licenses and 80 authenticated um, form users. We have Quick Fields, Leisure Fish Mobile, and then the public forms portal and web forms. As myself, here's the administrative support, technology director, I have Armando Ontiveros. Uh, he's our finance op operations application analyst. And this position is important because everything I was doing myself, everything besides managing for the, the, the district for technology, they were like, hey, come and help central office. It was just very difficult because you know, I had different things going on, plus to go help them. And you know, they're stuck. And so they won't move until you actually help them. So uh, that position was created. So, so you need to have somebody there at the central office location. Uh, Arthur Mesa, he's our network administrator. He does the backups and making sure everything's uh, running on the server. And uh, Mr. Ramirez is basically uh, my boss, and he's the other one who shares the same vision. Uh, he's the one that's helping us. If you don't <clears throat> have someone like that, uh, he helps push it, you know, across the board. We want, we want, you know, I want paperless everywhere, you know. And sometimes, you know, I was like, sir, we got to do some training, but I can't tell everybody to come to the training, so I've got to go to him, and he sends out the the message, and so you got to have someone there who's going to support you to do this. Paperless in uh, Edgewood. Uh, the work order system, we used to have paper, and that was with PPS and transportation. Um, basically, what we did in technology also before I got there in August 2010, they would get papers, and if they didn't look good or they didn't fill them out correctly, they'll get those papers and just throw them away. So no one kept track. There's no accountability. So we implemented my help desk, which was first for technology and uh, PPS. All our uh, PPS technicians, our uh, computer technicians, and our transportation all have iPhones. So all the work orders come through there. Uh, we don't have no issues as to, okay, where's the work order, you know, where they're at, you know, they can take pictures, they can do things like that, communicate. Uh, that was a lot of training because, again, these gentlemen are used to paper. 
And so it's also accountability. And so because we did that, that was a start of going paperless. I mean, you could imagine people would call in from the campuses and the secretary would take down the notes. And that was how they did their work order. So now it's streamlined where the end user can log in, fill it out, and it goes straight to the technician. And it tells them where it's going to go. If a technician says it's closed, an email goes back to the end user so they know the work order is closed. So that's something that's a streamlined, took everybody out, and uh, that helped out. Um, director and admin meetings. <clears throat> what we did was we started having meetings, and we got tired of, uh, I got tired of taking paper and paper to the meetings. So you got to take one for every uh, director so they knew what you were talking about. So I said, can we start going you know, paperless? So we have a projector. We have an Apple TV, and I project from my iPad, and that's how we run the whole uh, meetings now. So any meeting we have, everywhere, every room you go to, we have either a TV, a projector, and then with an Apple TV. Every administrator has an, um, an iPad, so that also helps streamline the paperless. And so right now we're trying to get to the um, principals to start doing that, and that's something that, that's the next step that we're doing. Um, professional contracts, as we know, um, we need to get that approved by the board. And we have about 1,800 employees, so the board president and the superintendent has to sign every single one. And so what we did, we just had them sign one, and we came through another system, we set it up through the web, and we just send out all the contracts through emails with a token. And so the end users can accept it. And they say, you know what, I'm just going to reject, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to go ahead and resign. Then they get populated with a form that they can fill out, and they can fill that right then and there. They don't have to wait, they don't have to call HR for a paper. So they're able to do that. And so that was a great, I mean, they loved it because signing 1,800 documents, they did. They liked that a lot. And then also, we, I changed the, um, the, our copy machines. Um, everybody pretty much has them in the district. So uh, what we did there was we had paid a state contract. We were paying every month, no matter what. If we used the device, if we didn't, we always had to pay at least you know, 175,000 clicks. And so I said, well, why don't we just look out there and put our own RFP out there? And we changed it so that we only get charged the clicks that we do. So June and July, we only get charged the rental, but we don't get charged the 30,000 extra that we were getting every month. So we're saving June and July and December, that's the lowest usage, we're not getting charged. So we added 100 copy machines, we started taking out printers inside the classrooms. So we started moving towards that. Yes, the teachers were upset about it, but we started talking about the savings. We started talking about what are they doing as a, we have instructional technology facilitators. And we started telling them, what are you doing, why are you printing? And so once we sat there and talked to them, we started showing them other ways that they can do that uh, to, for their documents. And, and so again, we're pushing iPads out and that's helping us. And, that department, but we went, we're still saving a lot of money just going this route for the copy machines. And so that was a, that was a big thing this, we just did this past summer. Accounts payable, we'll start there in purchasing. Uh, accounts payable, they had filing cabinets and boxes full of paper, as everybody knows. Um, they're not organized. Uh, with E-rate, I'm always asking them, hey, can you go back in at and and it takes forever, make copies, things like that. Now with the paperless, I just go, I go myself into there, at t folder, I grab the documents and I send them off. So it's a lot easier. Uh, label errors, labels missing, that's another thing that's an issue. Uh, document retrieval, you know, that time's wasted because for us, if it's the last year, then they have to go to a warehouse where sometimes we got rats that eat in the boxes, things like that. So, you know, that's a, now we don't have that issue. Now we don't have to worry about that because they have to save those documents. Uh, user emails limits, that's another thing that you may notice that if you're managing you're going to notice that your end users, their PDF files are going back and forth. You know, where's the document? And they just keep sending everybody the same document. And that's something that we changed. It's also no account accountability. We weren't keeping track of how many uh, invoices we were paying, how many things were not paid. Uh, with school districts, it's 30, 60, 90 days is kind of what we're concentrating on. And what happens is uh, we had it happen this past year was Apple stopped sending us document, uh, devices and put a hold because we didn't pay our bills. And so that's something that they were like, we need to focus on that. Um, and then also the reports when, when vendors are paid. We want to know how many are we paying a month, a week. Do we need more employees? And so this helped us uh, as we move forward with uh, Laserfish. It helped us to move forward with that. Uh, purchasing approves, POs, and, and no support. That's another big issue that we saw was that purchasing department would basically approve anything. They didn't really look at the support. And so that just led to more trouble, more issues. And, and so now, after an end user you know, fills out the requisition, they place it into Laserfish, what happens is the purchase department looks in that one folder and they can see the support. They don't have to call anybody, they don't have to email, they're able to see it. If it's not there, they don't approve it. And so that's something that we changed on that side. 
So what we did with accounts payable department, we built them workflow, uh, again, uh, end users, what they would do, we did a lot of training. That was a big thing on us, doing a lot of training for the end users because they're used to doing nothing but paper. And what we did was supporting the documents into LaserFish. So they'll do a requisition. After they did the requisition, they'll get their support, place into LaserFish, name the file, and automatically the workflow moved it over to accounts payable and into the purchasing department. And then from there, purchasing grabs the, uh, their PO, they place it in there, and then the workflow will grab that support and automatically place it behind the PO. That goes to accounts payable, and as soon as accounts payable gets it, they're able to research that. They, con they confirm you know, that the, the, the product was delivered, and after they're done, then they go ahead and push complete. When it goes complete, workflow moves it to another folder, and then from there, the compliance person, you know, she double checks everything. If there's something she doesn't see, that's not right, she can select incomplete, and it'll get moved back over to the, um, her people that's in her department. And if it's complete, then she'll turn around and it'll get ready to be prayed um, for a check. So it'll go to another folder, and that's where everything's saved. We know from there it's been um, ready for a check. So what we, do, what we do for filing is we save it by check. So one check can pay several POs. And so once we put in a check, it'll go in there and look for the POs that we put through the metadata, and it'll copy all the POs that were there into that one check behind it, and then just file, and that's it. And that's kind of what we started doing with them. Uh, there was a lot of issues uh, from the beginning. I'll talk about that. And this is kind of our folder structure here. As you can see right there, it's the AP purchase orders, district approved check requests, incoming invoices, incoming purchase orders, purchasing pending folder, requisition support. The requisition support is all the end users' files, their support, their requisitions, it goes there. So as a purchasing, I can just go in that folder and I can see all the departments. And then from there, purchasing just drops it. They get a PL, they just drop it into a folder, automatically goes to where it needs to go to, and it looks for that requisition. And so what we learned is we had to make things a lot easier. In the beginning, we thought, well, for us, for technology, it's easy. This is a piece of cake. But for the end user, they're used to paper. They're used to not doing computer stuff. And they, they would rather not. I mean, we had, we had to go back and look at them. Oh, everything's fine. And three months later, we go back and they're like, well, we're still printing. Uh, paper and things like that. And we're like, no. So right there, our boss was like, that's it, no. So Mondo had to sit with them like for a whole week, every day, and that's something that you have to do. You have to sit there, hold their hand, making sure that they understand the steps. And that's something that, you know, I really think that you have to do at your location. Uh, one of the things that we did know is that we have to be patient with our employees. Um, you know, we can't expect them to move fast. We had to make sure that they're, they understand what we're doing and why. They don't want change, that's very important. They don't want change. I mean, they've been there for 20 years and here's a young man telling them what to do. So they look at it that way. And that's something that, you know, anywhere, you gotta make sure that you just explain why and, and what you're doing. And they're gonna, of course, they're gonna make plenty of excuses. They're gonna say, you know, we didn't see it, we couldn't search. The biggest thing was search. They couldn't find the document when they searched for it. And so Mondo went over there and said, look, this is how you do it, showed them how to type it. And they're like, oh, wow. You know, so they, they were just, anything they could come up with, they did it. And, uh, provide plenty of training. When we pushed this out in January last year, what we did was we had training every week, open every day, morning, afternoon, especially for the campuses, so they, they can come out and visit with us. And, and the ones that we did private ones, because there's some that are embarrassed, so we, you know, they don't want to let everybody know that they made mistakes, so Mondo would actually go and sit with them one-on-one, -on -one just to make sure. But that helped because we could see the issues. We could see them, it's supposed to, our naming scheme was RS and then the six numbers. And what they were doing is RS, so they'll put Adam went to the store, and that was the invoice. And well, it wouldn't go anywhere in the template workflow because it looked for those numbers. So, and that's something we had to explain to them. And then also keep following up with the departments. That's something, don't give up on them. Don't just think that they're doing okay. We always have to constantly go over there making sure, is there any issues? And Amondo's able to look through and see all the, everything that's being entered, and we can see right away what's off and what's not working. Especially with purchasing, purchasing what happens is well, they get a PO and they'll forget or they think they, they might have already placed it inside LaserFish. What they'll do is place it again. So now we'll get a number two. So he'll go in there and look at that. And so that's something we have to just keep, a, keep an eye on that for now. Because the, the hard part is getting them used to it. Purchasing just, they get so many POs, so they just want to get it through the system. You know? And the thing is, is that no support, how are you approving this? I mean, we, we joke around like, hey, we'll just go get a car, purchase it, and see what happens. Because they were just letting so many things go through. But now, I mean, we had a meeting and 
we showed our director for purchasing, like, look what your ladies are doing. And so that's something that is important because at the end, accounts payable just can't, there's nothing, there was no support, why did you buy this? So it just leads to more wasted time. And then again, like I mentioned before, sit with your employees. Any questions on that with accounts payable? Anybody have anything that they're doing? Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we do scan them in. What happens is we centralize the invoices, so they all go to central office. We towed all the vendors. Of course, there's some vendors who don't listen, and so they'll still send it to campuses. And so what we did for the invoicing part, because we thought, oh, well, the end users can do this. They can turn around and do the invoice. We had them put information, and we said, ah, oh, forget it. That was a big, you know, big mistake. So all we did was tell our end users, just put an I, put whatever the invoice number is, and place it inside LazyFish. From there, it automatically grabs it and puts it into the incoming invoices folder, and then accounts payable will do the work and make sure everything's done correctly. So, I have a follow-up question. So, does your system have, um, do you have a system that actually prints the checks and does all that part? Is that separate from LaserFish? Yes, that's separate. Okay. Yeah, it's with uh, Texas. That's okay. what we use from Region 20, and that, that's where our, our uh, business system lays in right now. Okay, so do you see any benefit in, like if you already have a system that does the online purchase orders, already does all the matching up and everything of scanning in the invoices as a, just as a way to save everything and organize it? Well, if you, it's, a, it's a beneficial because of the paper that you see that okay. they're messing with, and it's also accountability. Uh, what happens when they get papers, you don't know where they left off, you don't know where it's at, you gotta search for it. And so, yeah, definitely okay. you need to do that. But what we're trying to do is, again, once you go in-house and you bring the system in there, there's some systems you can actually have this, the, you know, send out the checks already and things like that. But that's what we're trying to look at, bring in the system from Region 20 and bring it in-house so that we can do what we want to with it. Or also look at different software that's out there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we're recording the presentation, so I'd appreciate if uh, you have any questions, please uh, speak to the mic. Thank you. Do your schools have separate checking accounts? Do they have a separate process, or is everything centralized? Everything's centralized. I think the only thing would, yeah, everything is centralized, because even like student uh, activities and things like that, we still make that go through central office. Okay. Thank you. Next, I'm gonna talk about human resources. Uh, when I got there in August 2010, this was the only thing that was using LaserFish. And what they did was, they would just scan the new files of all the, of a new employee, and place that into LaserFish, that's it. So that's all they did. There was, I think there's a, maybe one, two workflows, but that was it. It was just something to help them with fast uh, folders, and it would just dump the files and automatically save it. That's all they did in HR. Um, so of course, when I got there, they, there was really, no, what happened was technology wasn't involved with Central Office. Central Office was basically on their own. Technology did their own thing, and so when we got together, they started saying, can you help us? And of course, we said, yeah, we can do that. So. Um, and that's where we ended up coming to a uh, laser fish uh, conference two years ago. And once we start seeing the same thing, maybe some of you guys, when you start seeing what you can do here, you bring it back and you start realizing, man, we can start doing this and doing this. And, and with smart files, they were great to help us out because I didn't really understand it, you know, the workflow. And, and I'm technology director, so I'm trying to run everything else. And then just to sit there to do a workflow, you know, some of ours are complicated. I mean, I'll be there late at night trying to figure it out because I want it to be perfect. And then finally when I got it, I was like, yes, it's, it's working, just so I could create folders for every department where I didn't have to do anything. So uh, that was a big thing when we came to the conference. We started learning what was out there and what Lazy Fish can do. So what we did was um, with HR, again, they weren't doing anything. So when forms came out, we saw the perfect, uh, you know, the, the perfect project, the software for us that we wanted to work with on forms because we, HR has a lot of forms. And so what we did, we started changing the hiring process Forms used are for new hires, so when a new hire comes in, you know how they have to fill all those documents out. So we changed up that, so we have uh, a, a new hire comes in, and they fill out the documents through uh, a computer, or they can do it from an iPad. And then once they're done, what ends up happening, they turn around and, and they, their documents get sent over to um, the person in HR. And so that was one thing we did for the forms. Uh, we create the workflow so that the active folders, the, um, when the form was created, the workflow would create the folder for that new person that we just hired. And so that was another step that we removed that we didn't have to do ourselves. And again, we used iPads for employee signatures. So there was uh, some documents that we had to get signatures. 
And so those documents, when they sit down with the HR representative, they would give them an iPad, and they can, with PDF Expert, it's what we used, and they would just sign the document, and then with LaserFish Mobile, we would just save it into their um, folder and just put, place it inside there. And then also what we did, we started changing it. Technology would create the email accounts for everybody, so we let HR create it. We came up with a system that was really very cheap so that they, when they visit with somebody, they can go ahead and create that email that's there for that end user, test it for that end user, and at the same time already send them the online contract of what board approved, and so that they can go ahead and approve that also right then and there. And it, it helps us because what we don't know is after a week, we go people before uh, employees, hey, I have no email, you know, and I don't have this. So, you know, we, we were like, well, we never know when you get hired, so we kept it up at front with HR. And also the approvals track to let the end user know the status. That's what's great about forms is that you know where that form's at. I mean, we have status change forms, new hires, we have resignations, things like that. You know where it's at. Before, they would send a bunch of papers to HR. HR would lose it, or they would don't know what, what they were working on. And it just was a big mess. So now it just streamlines everything. Everybody loves it. And besides that, I know the soup, he just loves it because he can be anywhere and approve you know, these workflows as the forms when they come through. That's like the biggest thing because you know, if they're waiting for him to approve it, he doesn't have to be in district. And so it just keeps everything running a lot faster and a lot quicker. Here we have the funding source. It's kind of like what we do for uh, if something comes in from HR, this is just a flow chart. And basically what we have is a submitter. They submit. It goes, of course, to the principal. So that's from a campus. They approve it. Uh, position control is HR, so we want to make sure that they double check the budget. They want to make sure that this is actually for special ed. If it does, then they'll put that, you know, again, they'll make the decision that it's a funding source. And so that it would have, this form would have to go to either bilingual, uh, special ed, Kate. So that's where, that's, that, that's important. You have to make sure because you need those approvals before the uh, curriculum uh, chief um, uh, officer approves anything. She's got to make sure that they approve it. So you got to make sure that that form can uh, flow through. And, and then from there, after she approves it, then again, we have an executive officer who also gets it. So this is just the line that we kind of go through the, for the flow. And um, after the chief academic officer approves it, then it goes to the chief finance uh, officer, and he approves it before it goes to the suit. And what's great with the forms is that we know where it's at. So we know who has, who's sitting on it, and we know um, how long it takes. I mean, you, once we put one through, everybody just starts approving it right away. Because again, we have iPads everywhere, so also we have iPhones for every administration. That's something, but with through E-rate, we get that reimbursed. And so it's something that helps us to keep the communication. And this is one with no funding source. So it's a submitter, submit, principal, approve, position control. They submit it, HR director overlooks it, she approves it. There's no funding source, so it just goes straight to the executive director. And if it's on the curriculum side, it goes straight to chief academic officer. And if it's not, if it's on oper operations, then it goes to my boss, approves it, superintendent. What we noticed in the forms is that we reduced a lot of signing that was being done before. Uh, sometimes some people had to see it, and it was just the way it was set in the old ways. You know? So what we did, we started looking into why do we got 15 signatures. You know? So we started reducing our signatures, and it just made the approval process a lot quicker. And as you can see here, this is what we do for HR. And this is how we're able to see who approved it, who didn't approve it. Start, chief, HR, superintendent. And then what's nice is that position control is allowed to change it. So if they see something comes through and it's not correct, if it's not the right budget, they can go ahead and make the change. And you can go back and look at what, in the beginning, what it was, the form. And then you can see what it was afterwards. And this is a HR new forms. Uh, basically, this is a PR form, status change form, new hire form. So we made these changes here. All these forms are basically just basic documents that we were using before, and we just started you know, adding these different uh, forms through LaserFish. The resignation and retirement, we use this one here, and this is filled out. It's public for everybody to fill out. Uh, they just would click on the link. We put Internet Explorer out there, uh, favorites, and we push that out through all the computers. And so anyone who's going to retire or they're going to resign, they can go ahead and just select that link and then fill this out themselves. And they don't have to go to HR and fill out the other form. They can just fill this out. And what's great about this is that the soup has to see it. So we want this to get to the soup as soon as possible. Once he gets it, he has the option to go ahead and say, 
fill that position or wait and don't fill that position. So there's no new form that has to be generated by the campus because this person resigned. So this just took another two more forms away just by doing this, this spot right here. And again, it only, it only he can see that spot. So we create a different form just for him to see when it gets to his location. But so everything's still the same, everything transfers over, but this is what's important for him that he can say, you know what, I want that position to be posted. And then what happens after it, he says yes, an email gets generated to the pair of his professional. They'll go into our system school recruiter, they'll post a job. And we even changed that. In School Recruiter, we made that paperless. We have our interviews with an iPad or a computer. Everything is there. All the data is there. We, well, what they were doing before was they were getting the data, and they were having to type everything in, go to Texas, type in the same data, go to an ASOP, type in the same data. So we started like, look, let's get the end user's data. Uh, HR will make sure it's actually correct when they look at the license and the address and things like that. And then now we're pushing that data across without having to type it over and over again. And this is the processing packet. The thing with the new hire that for us, we have different, um, what is it, new hires that different, if it's a professional, if it's para, if it's a bus, so they fill out different forms. And so we had to create different ones, and it's pretty much the same, there's just different pages. So we just took all our forms, placed it in here, the end user comes in, fills all these forms out. When they're done, goes to the representative. It's already in the LaserFish. We've already placed it into their, um, into their folder, and then it's already been created, and then all they do is sign the documents with the iPad. So the forms are paperless for several departments. Uh, approving forms electronically anywhere, it's awesome. That's, I mean, that's the great thing. Um, I believe I was out of town and, and there was a new hire for my position. So I just did it real quick from my iPhone and then pushed it through. Uh, forms allows us to assign access to different users, which is awesome too, because you don't, you don't give it to everybody. You, know, you get a chance to manage it, and that's a good thing. Uh, business process show the pathway for all to view. That's important because before we got started, um, no one really knew the processes, so they didn't know where, what to do. If I called in and said, hey, I, need, you know, I got a status change form, what do I use? Like, no one knew. When we started doing this, we started put, building flowcharts for everybody, and that's what started. We also worked with APQC. It's a company that comes in and helps you to organize your items. So basically, when they came in, we were like, yeah, well, we did everything already. Because you know, technology, we're building forms. Everything we do, it's a process. It doesn't matter whatever we do, it's a, it's a, we've been doing it. But HR was never doing it. Uh, payroll was never doing it. They were just doing what they were told. And so if they were told to do that 10 years ago, they'll still be doing the same thing since 10 years ago. And so what we did, it's good to sit down, view what they're doing, look at the department, see what, what forms that they have, um, see what you can change, take it back, draw it up, and then meet with the, the director and let them know, look, we can change this. And, and once you start doing that, they're going to realize, you know, the savings, how quickness, and then the waste of time that they were doing before. And then the workflow created to store documents and look up databases. That's what's great about the forms is that we have all these little tables. Um, when you finish with HR, you go straight to payroll, I mean, to risk management. In risk management, you just type in your six numbers, and it automatically will start populating the form for you. So that that's your information, but through the table that we already have set up. So those are little things that before they would write it down and, and that just and you couldn't even understand what they wrote sometimes, so this just helps it easier. After they're done with that, they go to payroll and they can fill in their six numbers. That table has all their information. If they have an incident, they can go to risk again two months later, they fell down. They fill it out and they just type in their six numbers and then everything just populates the form. And it just depends on how you set that up. It's just a lookup. And then we have, of course, the public forms are available to all users. We have forms from, uh, have unique URLs, favorites, desktops. So what we are asking is, uh, we have so many forms, is categorize our folders so that we can say HR and we have a folder. Because right now it's just a bunch of, you know, uh, forms and forms and forms. So you got to go next page, next page. And so we name everything HR. If it's risk, we put risk, dash. And that's what's helped us for now. But with the favorites, with those URLs, we can place those in the folders for per everybody in the campus and, every, and throughout the district and then organize it that way. So they'll go there and they'll click on it and then from there they can go to, it'll just pop up the form if they have access to it. Uh, custom JavaScript and EISD forms helps to calculate fields. So we have overtime form and so we use a JavaScript of course for that so that way we can calculate. I know my boss is like police department's always working overtime. It's never scheduled. You know, they got to work on a weekend. They got to do something. So they, they also have iPhones and uh, they can fill that out wherever they're at and there's the overtime form. 
And so it just keeps it going. It's live. It's, it's something that, that they were tired of paper. I mean, anything paper, they call me, get rid of this. <laughs> That's basically how it is. It's anything with a paper, why are we doing this? So we start learning even other applications that you have. You start learning. We have Time Clock Plus. With Time Clock Plus, they had an option that you can go into the system and say, I want time off. They would have this form that they would always fill. So I was like, well, if we turn on the email, then they can just, the same way they sign in, also ask for the time off. And it straight goes to your manager. Manager approves it. System already puts it into the time frame when you're going to be off. So that's it. You don't have to do anything else. So there's, once we start looking into this, there's always paperless. There's always options. There's just no one really. They buy applications, but they don't really use the whole thing, you know, all the modules that they have. That's the biggest, biggest issue that we see. Just like what I got there, LaserFish was only used for HR, and look what we're doing with it now. And then also we got the approval and reject the form rate approved from two to three weeks to a few hours. You know, that was what was huge because the forms, if you didn't have the right form or something was missing, you wouldn't know about it until you got to the paperwork two to three weeks later from HR. So now we get it to the email, hey, this is not correct, reject it, send it back, refill it back in again, and it's already approved. Any questions on HR? Uh, Anything maybe you're doing that you, may be an issue, but yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, in both scenarios, do you apply retention to those electronic files? Uh, the electronic files, we keep them in the database of LaserFish, and we save it there. We also have an online through the cloud uh, saving the, the documentation, and so that's how we save all those documents. But do you apply retention as far as like you're going to maintain your accounts payable files for seven years and then they would be? We do. We follow the same way that they've always have. The and paper. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So whatever was in paper, we do the same thing. One of our, our items that we're still looking into is special ed. Uh, we're trying to scan all their files and things like that, but we're trying to find out what are the rules uh, if we do that. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing because we have a whole classroom of nothing but filing cabinets. And just one student could be three or four folders, you know. And so that's just a bunch of paper. And it takes a long time to go through and look at those documents. When with LaserFish, you can type in a search, and it pops up right away. And so that's something that they're, like, wanting us to go to. But we have to make sure what we have to do with the, how long we have to hold on to it. And that's just the biggest issue. And then also with ARDS and things like that, they can be anywhere. They can bring up the, the files that they need to. So any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, with your new hire form, after everyone's approved it, is a copy sent back to the employee so that they have a copy of, of say, their rate of pay and the job they've been hired yes, for? Yes, what happens when, the, after it's been approved and they're filling out the new hire form, again, like I said, HR creates the email. Well, after they create the email, they'll send the contract right there. So off the iPad, the end user will log in. We have a TV right there with the HR, so in case they can't see the iPad, they can still see it through the TV and they're able to uh, approve, and they can see the pay and make sure everything's good. And that just makes it easier because of the fact that, you know, uh, it takes long, a lot of proce uh, longer process when it goes to the campus and then we don't know about it. Also rights, you, right then and there, they give them rights to their campus, their campus public folder. Um, it, already, it just gives them everything at one time. And HR, all they gotta do is select the campus, put in information, we use AD Manager. And that, give, and we have Active Directory, so it just makes it so much easier. Yes, ma'am. Um, how is scanning used in your organization? Do you guys have scanners on every desk, every department, or is it like yes. just a unit? Yes. When I got there, uh, again, we had scanners, but it was only at central office, and they had used for ditches. I'm not sure that model or something, but it just they always had issues. It was locking up, things like that. So we went with Epson, and then we went district wide because we had to get one for every end user. And so they have it there. They'll get their invoice, the checks, or something that comes in from HEB, the receipts. They'll just put it there, scan it, and snapshot it, or they'll go ahead and, and uh, drop it into LaserFish. The issue is we still have them. We're like, hey, you can just drop it straight into LaserFish if you download your requisition, but they still like to print it and then scan it and <laughs> do it that way. So that's something that they still do. But, um, yeah, definitely the scanning. That's one thing we still do. Every copier that we have out there does the same thing for scanning. Their new copy machines have the access for uh, Apple, so Apple can walk around and just print from an iPad, just print to those copy machines. We have Follow Me Print. I'm in charge of all the security cameras, GPS, everything. So uh, we have uh, cards. So before you get into a building, you have to actually scan and get in. Well, that same card, we used it for the copy machines. And so the copy machines, you can print, go to any campus, 
swipe, and then your prints will come. So you're not wasting paper, and then when you need your document, it'll, it'll be there for at least two weeks. And so that's a big change that we did. Because it's wasted. When you print, if, especially if it's important, it just sits there, and everybody sees it. And so now we just got people fighting for paper. You know, they get paper, and they just, this is my paper, so they take it out of the copy machine, and then they put it in there. It just damps everything up. So. But those changes have made a big deal. But yes, yeah, scan, scanning is, we still do scanning a lot. And HR still does all their scanning from old documents. And so that's a big thing. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, how long did it actually take you or for your team to gather the requirements and implement the changes? Um, and how many resources did you have to use? Um, um, yeah, it, it probably, we did it in the summer. And basically what it was is, is myself and then Amanda just meeting with the directors, finding out the process. It also helped with the APQC because our, our, uh, my chief was like, hey, I need everybody to start talking about it. what is your process? Like, uh, especially forms. forms they would turn around and use old titles and old person's name. So he's like, no, we need to change that. So in one meeting, what helped is I said, can I create a forms drive? Everybody, every department places their forms in there. And these are the official ones. So no more using the, the form that was on your desktop or your email from last year. You got to use those ones. We started using titles. We started changing things. Don't use names because then you, when someone leaves, you got to go change that name again. So we just started changing little things like that and learning that, you know, once we create the flow charts, it was easy. I mean, for us, for technology, it was easy. We just need to know what y'all do. From here to the end, what did y'all do? I know that I talked to other school districts that maybe they had laser fish and they were saying they were paperless, but they just scanned the PO and put that in there. That's not, you gotta go from end to end. And so that's paperless, that's true paperless. So the workflows was a big deal. And working with smart files when we got into an issue that you gotta make sure you work with your bar and they're there to help you out. Because sometimes, you know, for myself, I'm busy. We got so many things. I have a three point five million dollar uh, budget, so we got so many things going on, and it's like, oh, you know, I'm doing laser fish at night, trying to do the workflows, and and so you just got to have somebody there at least that's managing it, or at least doing a little bit of the work, because really it's copy and paste. It's almost a cookie cutter, which makes it so much easier. But it was basically by summer when school started. We wanted to make sure by August everything was ready to go. So that's basically how long it took. So did you already have flowcharts in place, or you had to create? We didn't have any. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when you go ask anybody, and see, the thing is with AQPC, they were like, just create two. And we were like, there's no way there's only two processes that y'all do. And they were like, oh, we're only going to do two, and that's it, because that's it. That's all the boss wants us. So we just went in and started saying, no, what else do you do? What else do you do? You know, so that's the other thing. The biggest thing is finding out, do you need signatures? You know, which forms actually need a true signature? Now we just learned that you can actually put a signature in there and do some things like that. But we just push things that we can't, like a W-4, uh, a W-9 or something like that, we'll use an iPad and just have them sign it. So but it just makes it a lot easier because the paper doesn't get lost. Okay, I mean, the form doesn't. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so um, this is a little uh, related to the technology. Like, what is the technology hurdles that you face integrating all these laser fish products? What do we face? Yeah. What are the technology hurdles that you face? Uh, basically, I mean, like I said, it was. It's not that difficult when you're doing it. It's just doing when you have a lot of forms. It's sitting there creating, you know, the the business process and making sure testing that everything works. Make sure you always test. One important thing is that we would put laser fish account. We created one so that if some end user wasn't there or something didn't go through, we can push it through ourselves and make sure it gets moved over. And that's something that was important because if not, you got to tell the end user to start over. You know, and something that you got to start building in there. I think something that we, we asked for, there's a way like we do with uh, workflows, you can stop it and then publish and then all the forms get all the updated. So we asked for that because what happens, we have to tell the end user to start over. You know, our HR director, she's out right now for three weeks. And so the forms that are in there now, we had to tell them to start over because she was not there. You know, so we didn't want to have laser fish account showing that it was uh, uh, approved. You know, because you look at it and it's going to show that it was approved by laser fish. So we wanted to make sure that HR director approved that. So what we did was we started thinking like, let's create accounts for HR direct, uh, HR department, things like that, just in case we need to go in there that we can use them to approve the process. But until hopefully we ask that they can do the publish that we do work for, uh, with the workflow, it will be the same thing. But for technology, it's, it's driving everything because of the fact that 
everybody sees the need. I got truancy who, when they have issues with students, and now they're seeing, hey, what do we do from this paper we get? We have to go get approved by this person. The police officer has to approve it, and it has to go those steps. Well, it's all email right now. So now they start seeing what we're doing, and then so yes, um, it's a big need. Now, now, now it's just basically put us up front and showing that besides curriculum, besides education, technology, once it, if you don't have no internet, what are you going to do? You know, and they start realizing without technology department that we can't do anything. You know, they forget, you know, what to do. So, yeah, we, we definitely, uh, the stress, it's not too much. Uh, it's just me trying to get my knowledge, you know, like the, what was it, yesterday, the Tuesday thing? Larry's brain, getting that information and feeding it to Mondo. So that's the hardest part. <laughs> But no, that's, that's basically it. OK, we'll move on. Talk about payroll and risk department. Uh, payroll, again, this is the overtime form. Uh, payroll form calculates the overtime. Uh, please use it from their iPhones. Payroll visits uh, the overtime folder. So when this document's uh, been submitted, it goes to a folder. And then payroll visits that folder when it gets time to pay, because then they can see that's the really approval of all the overtime. And then when it's time to do, uh, when it's time to do the paychecks. And basically, what we did was all our forms. What we did was we just created them through forms. So again, we have that form that was on paper. We just did the same thing through uh, laser fish forms, and that's how we did our information here. Uh, so what we did for here, this is we're doing the calculations, and this is a script that we did in here to calculate. And this is the biggest thing, you know, for us, we, we had to get an outside vendor to help us in trying to get some of this done. Uh, but yes, this is basically what we were using, this code, so that whatever you typed in there, it calculates your hours based off you know, your, your pay, and then here's your overtime. Because that was the biggest thing at first, was like, okay, we can fill out the form, but who's going to calculate it correctly? You know, so a lot of things we're doing, too, is that we're trying to streamline as if I put, you know, I want a new hire and I'm going to put this person's uh, name or whatever that's already in the system or whatever, it will automatically start populating things that are already in the system. So those lookup tables is great because it's less steps. I mean, you almost can go to a form and maybe do just two steps in the form and submit. It's already doing all the work for you. You know, and that's the thing that's great about those tables. You know, it's just doing the work behind there. That's the stress on the work is finding those tables. Um, Vendors, that was a big issue for us. We went to purchasing. What's your vendors? Give us a list of all the vendors. Some of the vendors they don't even use anymore, they still have them on a list as they're active. So it's really, we're doing everybody's work in a way. We're cleaning it up, but someone has to do it. And, and so that's part of what we found that we started doing is cleaning everything up. We even had users that were already getting paid still, and they already had retired you know, six months ago. So it was huge. I mean, things that you start finding out. Our risk management, employee input the, uh, their employee ID, populates the form. Uh, employee does it through an iPad. Uh, we have a TV there. We have everything running through there. Uh, employee submits the form automatically saved in employee's folders. So uh, one issue that I did have was organizing all the employee folders. Payroll had their own folders for employees, inactive, active, so did uh, risk management, so did HR. So they were duplicating things three times. Status change form, they were doing it three times. <coughs> Just because HR didn't like payroll, so they didn't share it. You know, so sometimes, hopefully it doesn't happen in your area, but that happens. And so you, we came in and said, HR, y'all have to, this is where it starts. You know, we, you see the beginning and the end. The other departments just make sure that things are closing out. And so by doing that, that's going to help us. That's going to be a lot of work because I've got to go in there and making sure I get all the risk. And they named everything different, too. It wasn't last name, first name. The other ones did the first name, last name. First letter, comma, last name. So that's an issue. That's going to be a lot of work. But the end result is going to be everybody goes to the same system, the same location. We're only backing up one location. We're not having to back up. She's got a whole terabyte. She freaks out for risk management, but that's all her data. And that's how she backs it up. Even though we're backing everything up to the P drive and, and everything else, she still has to be on the, uh, her tero drive. So that's going to be a big thing of changing out. And then payroll. Payroll is big because of the fact that they, they have to do the same thing. And so we're just having to get all their folders and place it in there. So that's going to be a big thing. The new hire process paperless as employee visits each department. That's when they come through. And then again, like we, we do, we're big on TV monitors. We have them everywhere. You know, we have a, a flat screen on, on, on top and every, uh, of the wall. We have either iPad. Uh, 
and again, we use iPad for signing documents, but again, it goes back to paperless. It doesn't have to be just with laser fish. What we do is this even coming into a campus. We have a, an iPad and we have it mounted on, you don't have all those little, uh, <clears throat> was it the little papers that are there. If you're from maintenance or you're from here, you have to sign those documents. What we do is we use the iPad sign in. And, you know, so for, by doing that, that just made it more paperless. You know, you have a big meeting, you got 100 people coming by, they sign in there. At the end, I can just forward this and I send it to my director and say, here, here's an Excel sheet. And then they go and say, hey, how come you didn't sign in or things like that. But it just makes it so much easier. So it's an iPad sign in and, and uh, that, again, is another way to just do paperless. I mean, paperless, is, there's, it's out there, but you can change. You just got to start messing with it and changing it, changing the way things were done in the past. The athletics department, um, the forum for officials, we have a weekend or even a day, they'll have 100 officials there, and that's 100 forms that are coming in to accounts payable. Uh, those same 100 forms have to go to athletic director to sign them. He's got to prove every single one that they actually work those times. And then they have to turn that into accounts payable. Accounts payable gets that document, and they turn around, and they have to go through each one, make sure all the budget's correct, things like that. And when they do that, then they go ahead and write the checks out. And so what we're doing is, uh, is we place the form out there through Laserfish. And we also have an issue because of a W-9. We have issues when um, the official, it's a new official, they have to have a W-9 for us to pay them. And so the system for a lookup will go in there and see if they have it. And if they don't have it, through the iPad, because we have iPads that are set out, they can do a W-9 app, fill that out, and then send it to uh, purchasing. Purchasing will create them as a new vendor and then we can go ahead and pay them when it comes to pay, uh, time to pay them. And that's a big deal. I know we're trying to look at going to all the officials when they meet in the summer and see if we can get them all to fill this out. And, it's, and then there's the apps. I mean, it's an official government app for the W-9, so it makes it easier. And again, here we get with the bookkeeper reviews the forms, updates and submits. Uh, the athletic director loves it because he's like, I don't have to go. He, I mean, you know, they're busy. They got all these games, weekend. Uh, going on and he's got to sit there and just sign that this official was here. And so he can do that from anywhere now. And the accounts payable receives and pending folder and processes out. I mean, when I would walk in, that's all she would have is just all these forms, papers. Now she doesn't have that. So again, just the paperless of what we're doing. Questions? Um, again, we got paper or you want to be paperless? You know, so. <clears throat> I actually have two questions. Um, how are you handling all these forms when you have bilingual employees and, and subcontractors? Well, we we're, were talking about that. We were going to go ahead and start creating another form for that because of the fact that we have to have like, somebody go and sit down with somebody and talk through them for what it is. And so we're going to go ahead and start creating those and get, see, look at it where it says English or Spanish and you check on it and then it uh, brings up the Spanish form if you need the Spanish. And it sounds like you have iPads everywhere, so how are you keeping track of the inventory and theft on those? Well, we have these, uh, it's, we have a stand, and it's drilled into the wall, and then we also have some that are protected and things like that, so it's kind of like a kiosk. And so what we're doing is just basically the inventory, we have a, a system that's a, a online, and so we keep everything there. If you're, gonna, um, if you're gonna move it somewhere else, you can just log in, say I'm gonna move it from this campus to the next campus. We don't wait for warehouse. Before they had one Excel form, turn it into a warehouse, and the warehouse, the lady would have to fill it out. By the time she filled it out, it could have been moved three times. And so now we have that also through the forms. Any other questions? Yes. Which manufacturer do you guys use? Uh, we use Texas with the Region 20. Are you able to do that? No, we, we, we're not able to. We're looking into doing that. Uh, that's one of our issues that we're seeing. Uh, Region 20, it's, you know, it's... Uh, they have, it's their own system, and so there's things that we want to do, like reports, and we want to push out all the information that we need for all the employees and just do that. We're not allowed to. We, they, you know, they're like, you have to use uh, ODBC and then grab it. It just makes it so difficult just for us to just, just let us get that report. Right. And so that's, just, that's the confusing part. So I know my boss is like, hey, what's out there? We even talked about let's write our own, and things like that. It just You start realizing what you can start changing, you know, because of the fact that it's just frustrating that you have to go through all these loops you know, with those third-party applications. But the good thing about all this stuff is that it keeps everything accountability through the system so they match up. 
Any other questions? I want to talk about real quick about a bonus that we're kind of doing with Laserfish. Um, is we're doing dashboards, and so what we do is here's the accounts payable, and we have all our invoice, all our vendors here, and these are the invoices that we have. So it's really big that we do zero to thirty, thirty to sixty, sixty to ninety, ninety to plus. I mean, we need to know who we haven't paid, you know, because now they're going to turn off that service or they're not going to allow us to purchase anything. So. Uh, again, you know, this is something because not all the admins are going to, you know, you, you know, you meet with administrators, they don't have time. They're not going to have time to drill down and look at everything and, you know, so we want to make sure that we can provide something that they can see. And so with this dashboard, they can bring up, um, say we're going to look up Apple or any, any vendor, and we can see that Alamo Roofing has one that's zero 30 days. So we're cool. We're, we're okay. But if there's some that are 90 days, that's three, we can go ahead and drill down and select that item. And when we select it, we can see district PO. We can see which department, if it was, if it was for a, a campus. And then we can see the amount. So we know these three we haven't paid. Why? And that this gives the administrator something to say, hey, let me go talk to that person. Let me talk to the director and say what's going on. Because that's what he wants to, to start looking into. So this is something we're just grabbing the information that's in the workflows and all the stuff that's being saved into the SQL database, pulling that information out and putting it into a dashboard. And so we're doing the same thing with the POs, so we know how many POs we generate. You know, it's also helping because you can determine, do I need more employees? You know, there's some, we've heard some districts that have one or two, and they do a lot more work than we do. You know, and so that's why we're trying to let the employees that we do have, let them know, like, hey, you know, you're not keeping up. 30, 30 checks in one day is not enough. You know, we got someone who's doing all, you know, uh, 150 checks in one day by themselves. And so that's something that's big for us that, that our, um, Chief officers looking into. So these dashboards are something that's good. And we work with a, a company who's creating all this, and we're just pulling the data that's already in LaserFish and then putting it out to a dashboard. And we're doing a lot of things with uh, like Mondo pads, and it's, it's a big iPad basically, a touch. So we're trying to get everything where you can just go to a screen, touch it, like Minority Report, grab the picture, move it around. We're doing that. But it's also video conferencing. It's also video conferencing because I had a choice either polycoms or buy something different. So we were like, well, we can get the Mondo pad. The Mondo pad, I can do all these different things, but I don't have to leave my office. I can communicate to my boss, and we can both make changes to a plan and then save it, but we never mess the, the original up. You know? So that's just another thing that we're trying to do. And, and, uh, and again, a lot of people will come out. Apple's come out. They love the app. They love the sign-in. We talk about LaserFish, and they're just like, how are you doing it? You know, so we got other school districts I've talked to, like, hey, can you show us what you're doing? Because they have it, they just don't know how to implement it past that. Or does it work? So you got to sell it. you got to sell it to somebody. you got to sell it to administrators because sometimes they come back and they're like, hey, i got $40,000. let us just spend $40,000. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how we're going to use it. We're just, we need to spend it because it's going to be the end of June and we're not going to spend no more money. And that's what we have to do with technology is have to help those people. And that's the frustration thing because we're like, why did y'all buy this? <laughs> when you already have something that can do that. And so... And that's the end of my presentation. Um, again, any, any form that's out there can be created. I think that's the biggest thing is that you're going to have to do is get those, uh, get those uh, forms that you have, put them all in a central location is the best way to do it. And once you get that information, then start talking to those departments and saying, can we change this up for you? You know, who has to sign it? That's an important thing. Who has to sign that document? You know, as we did, we started noticing we got rid of all those signatures and dropped them down to a lot less signatures because we didn't need them. In the past, people, there's this power, and they wanted it. So as the education side, that's the things that we have to face. So, But this is our contact information. If there's anything that we can help you out, we'll definitely be willing to help and see what we can do. Currently, right now, it's doing whatever they want to. My boss is basically like, that's curriculum, we're operations, so we don't take care of curriculum. But for us, I mean, sorry, for us, I want to help everybody. And so in the background, we're helping curriculum, like we're helping truancy, we're seeing what they're doing. Um, we saw our executive officer who is in charge of all the specialists, she still doesn't use an Outlook for her calendar, she still uses a wall calendar. And so those are the frustration things that we have to go through. But what we're doing is we're pushing, you know, how you can use an iPad, edu creations, you can turn around and have lesson plans already planned out. You can share it with millions of people out there.
Exactly. Exactly. Correct. And that's the thing that we see, the vision. The problem is you got to step through those steps. I, I mean, I constantly ba ba uh, fight back with the, the curriculum director because they have their way, you know, and it's like you got to go around it, and then I get stuck in the middle, and I'm like, no, they'll start yelling at me, but I'm just here to help you, you know, and that's basically what we're trying to do. And so we see the, big, the biggest picture. I mean, that's why we started doing the sign-in app and the things that we can do with laser fishing, saving the documents. Like, what I'm looking right now is when a student comes in, they're late. Well, they have them uh, write a paper, they do all this. I'm like, you can do that through laser fish, then automatically, who's their teacher, and send an email, and the teacher will get it. Why do you have to have that piece of paper and wait for everybody to show up? So we have a long line of all these students that are late. And at the same time, my director, when I told my officer, uh, chief officer about it, he's like, we don't care if they're late, we don't count them absent. So why are they doing that? I don't know, you know? But that's what we're seeing, that just making that change will make it streamlined. The students won't be there even more five or ten minutes late because it's a long line, you know, and that's something that they're seeing that, you know, that's a benefit. But I had the instructional technology uh, facilitators under me and last year, but again, she took them back just because, you know, they felt like they wanted to control that. But they're starting to realize, you know what, we got to give it back to technology. So we're going to be waiting for that part so that we can... The biggest thing, even with the teachers, you got to train, 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 you know, and that's the biggest thing we saw with these end users. you got to train your departments. If you don't provide that, and you don't give them enough, we do handbooks, we do videos, we place it into a P drive. It's called LaserFish, and all the instructions are there. If you don't provide that, you think that just because you said it, they're going to take it back? No. Half of them are not even listening, you know, and they're just, you know, why didn't we provide tacos in the morning and stuff like that? You know, that's what they're caring about because... Mondo will be there, and three months later, asking, hey, I need to do a requisition. How do I do it? We're like, well, we trained you for like at least a whole month. And so those are things that you have to do that we learned. And again, just to make sure, always provide a loophole out. Uh, making sure when you're doing these, these process forms, make sure you put yourself in there. Create an account and do it that way. Yes? Are you doing anything about Oh. Oh, go ahead. Are you doing anything with QM folders right QM, now? What, what are those? The student folders. Oh, student, fo student information? Cumulative folders. Uh, we're doing it for the past employees that need to transfer it, things like that. But for currently, no, we haven't. I've done just doing, like, creating share drives and putting all the, the names in there and sharing it that way. Um, employees. Students. Okay. Students. But that's a huge thing because what I want to change, what I see is when I come in as a, student, as a parent and I want to sign in uh, my, for the beginning of the school year, all the Leisure Fish forms can be there and can do everything from get to go and can automatically populate everything. It's like when you go buy a vehicle, it's the same way. It just populates your name everywhere. So it's the same thing. That will clean up the system, be a lot easier to gather the data. And also what we're looking at is some, some parents, some families have three students, uh, three kids that are attending. So they got to do those same forms for all three. And so we're trying to change that up, but using LaserFish. So that's our goal for next summer. Uh, during the summer, build that out, get it ready, and then push it that way. That's going to be huge, but I think that's going to be uh, We just have to make sure our thing is, um, and that's the issue, is what needs to be signed. No one really has an answer. It's just what we did in the past, so that's why it has to be signed. So that's the biggest thing. So with LaserFish, though, what we do is you can put the initials, you can put, you know, we use, like, okay, use your last four numbers of your social that I uh, approve all this. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Are you doing any online signatures? Uh, no, we're not. We're, anything that has to be done, we're doing it through the iPad. And that's with a PDF expert. We just grab that PDF file. But we learned that we could do this other input into the forms uh, yesterday. So we're like, oh, let's do that. That would help us. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any ROI or any cost savings that you can show on what you've uh, saved by going uh, this route? Yeah, definitely ROI is basically like with the copier machines, all the things that we were printing before. I mean, the savings, what I did before we put that RP out, just printing alone, and we, we would buy ink from three companies. Two companies, I would get 175000 we spent in one year. And our contract was 300000 So I didn't even get the third company, which was Office Depot. So, you know, we buy a lot of ink from there. 
So doing what we did, just alone, just doing that, we know we're saving a lot on that. Um, paper, that's a big thing that we were wasting. Uh, the other thing is accountability. The other thing is, is the process of getting things a lot quicker. You know, if you're a staff and you, you have two people out, but you've got to wait two, three weeks for someone to get approved, now it's being one, uh, in one day, we don't miss the board meeting. That person gets approved. So it's just a lot of things like that. We're working on that right now. But the savings we can really tell is time, the time that it, we're getting things done. Uh, the district has won TASBO uh, Level 2 award. We won it last year as level one, and we just got awarded uh, in Christmas level two. And so it's all based on the paper list, uh, what we're doing. We're actually going to go and, and, uh, and, and TASA in San Antonio, it's going to be in Austin, and then TASBA will be over there and uh, presenting also. And it's all based on what we're doing now, the paper list, the forms, the process, the flow charts, because every, I mean, I can go to any department, probably another school district, and some people don't know what, what, what we're doing. You know, I just know this is my job, and that's all I do. You know, and some of the things we're looking at in payroll, they got four people who have to pay for the employees. And I'm like, once I get done with everything, you may only need just one. Because they all just check, and they check things, and I'm like, they check the first person got paid, and they check to see if there was a check. Well, if with Excel, you can just throw that in there and do a comparison. But they do it all by one, hand one by one. So that's what we're getting to. But again, my uh, chief is basically saying, we're not trying to get rid of you. We're just trying to make more, you know, uh, do more out of you. So that's something to make sure. Just let it, because everybody got scared in the beginning. They're like, oh, no, you know. So that's another fight that they fight. You know, they didn't want to do it because they're scared. Well, I'm not going to have my job. You know, but that's what we're telling. We're like, no, we need you to do this now because you can help us. So, but yeah, definitely there's a lot of savings that we're doing. But not just in money, but it's also in time and getting things done. With the Laserfish forms that are submitted, are you then filling out PDF forms using workflow, or are you just keeping them as the Laserfish form, save to Laserfish option? We do both. We do both. Depends on the signature and things like that. With the PDF forms, it puts the signature on there, and then it's on the side of it. And then with the forms, there's some that we don't really need the signature, so we keep it the forms. Like a pizza party for a, camp, a cafeteria, they need it. They can fill it out. It goes to the um, food, service, food service director, and then she schedules everything out that way. And with our other system that we do, we do a lot of things with transportation. So that's something I was looking into what forms could do. But we could start looking in calendars, start assigning things. Because with transportation right now, you can fill out a form through our, uh, my help desk and automatically puts it on a calendar. And then you can download that calendar and you can see where is there a bus available, is there a suburban available. And so that helps the end user. They don't have to call and everything's already scheduled. So we probably, right now to the end of the day, we have about um, maybe 100 trips already scheduled. You know, but we still get the same thing. Well, we don't know what's, where it's at. We're like, it says right there, download the calendar. And so they're able to download the calendar and see what's going on. So there's not just Laserfish. It's also other program, uh, programs that we have there, applications, but it's all paperless. You know, you can touch it again through anything. You just got to start implementing it. Any other questions? Well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, and uh, I thank you very much uh, for attending, and thank you, Adam, for this enlightening <laughs> session. What a great insight. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And we have about uh, 10 minutes before the next session starts, so feel free to come up and ask Adam additional questions if you may.